Oh, hello viewers, and welcome to the AO Gaming Channel. This is Red Eye speaking, and as you can see, today I'm going to be playing this new game, uh, Full Quiet, from Retrotainment Games. Originally this game was announced, I think, back in 2017, and here we are, um, several years later. <laughs> but they finally got it out, and I'm glad that they did. I've played this game a few times, and it's an excellent game. It's definitely worth the wait. Um, we're gonna get started here in just a second. But anyway, when you push L and R, um, the buttons, um, I'm playing this on the Nintendo Switch, by the way. You have these border options. Pretty cool stuff, overall. I would also recommend for any new players out there, definitely take a look at some stuff in the manual for the controls. That way you're not too lost when you start the game. But anyway, let's start it up. So basically now I'm playing as the main character of this game, Hutch. He found a note from Pap and now he's making his way to his shack. So that previous sequence was actually Pap and some stuff was going down with all those creatures and the relay's down now as well. Anyway, what I just picked up there item-wise was a rope. Sometimes you'll see little things up in the trees that you can shoot at. Occasionally you might even um, find stuff if you randomly shoot at uh, things like other objects and items might drop. Anyway, the controls are Y for doing your dive roll while moving, E is to shoot, A is to jump, X is to reload. Then to grab, you hold up on the D-pad and then push up again to climb up. So those are just some basics. My goal with this game for you viewers, hopefully, is to provide a walkthrough that's both enjoyable to watch and also one that's helpful uh, for those of you that are trying to 100% the game. I do plan on showing both endings of this game uh, where you uh, don't get the 100% and then the other ending where you do 100% it, so make sure you stick around for the rest of the series for all of that. But for right now we're in the first area. This is the uh, plateau basically. 
We're underground right now. Yeah, there's no items from those uh, creatures there, but one thing you want to do is uh, clear out uh, sectors, as they call it. And sometimes the creatures will hold uh, extra items. With this puzzle, you just grab it, that ring, lowers that uh, pillar. That move I also did was a momentum swing when I grabbed it and swung off it. So that helps to get through that uh, as well. Yeah, the shooting in this game is pretty interesting with how you can aim up, crouch, do all that. You can even aim diagonally with uh, shooting. Definitely helps for the airborne uh, enemies. Alright, there's the shack finally. That's Pap's shack. Right now it's offline and the door is closed. Yeah, those are energy bars. Already got quite a few. Can carry up to six of them. Another thing that's great about this game is the music. It definitely sets the mood. So we need to somehow get in that well. If you ever feel lost, definitely check your map by pushing the minus button. You can also scroll through different uh, things here to see stuff. You can even read your previous notes that you found. And also there's transmissions that eventually come. We'll see uh, two of those in this episode soon. Anyway, let's get that hatch open. There will also be some sensor codes on those rocks that I'm going to cover at the end of this episode, just so you know. So stick around for those. One uh, sensor code is pretty uh, tricky in particular. It's actually in this uh, area that I'm in. Reserve powers in the well. So yeah, those creatures that are walking around... <laughs> just got hit by that. Are called uh, Dewagos. You can also find out more about a lot of these other things, like those hanging vines and other stuff, in the manual. So anytime you want to look that up, just push L and R and go to that. If you have this game on Switch, it's also on PC and Xbox. If you're thinking of getting it uh, digitally. Yeah, I don't need to mess with him. So we hit that switch, and the hatch should be open now. Yep, it's open. You had to drop down from a ledge, you push down an A, just so you know. And here's the tricky circuit puzzles. They actually aren't that bad. I used to really dislike these, but I've learned how to do them now. So because I went through that heart, that'll restore my health. That comes in handy if you can complete it that way. It's not required though. You can just do it with uh, connecting the different circuit ends without going through there. So do it whatever way you want to. Let's take care of him. There's another rope. And we're going back where we were earlier. 
Oh yeah, you can pick up ropes as well. If you're standing by those uh, perches there you, where you put the rope in, those rope holders, I guess I'll just call them, you can pick them up by uh, pushing up. Sometimes though you want to leave the ropes in certain spots, especially if you're coming back to an area later. Which in this game there is a little bit of backtracking, but it's not too bad. As long as you're grabbing uh, certain items and things, you won't have to come back to certain places too much. Other than just, just uh, tune the radios and things. Alright, so let's get to the shack now. Once I complete this, we can access it. <clears throat> Yeah, the way you rotate those pieces is with the X button, just so you know. Okay, and this is the primary objective, at least for this first part of the game, is to tune seven camp radios. Then once you do that, you'll get your uh, second objective in the game later on, when you loop back uh, to this place, the plateau. So those flags represent where the other camps are. As you can see, it's a pretty big world. Alright, so tuning, you can do it with the control stick or D-pad. I personally play this game with the D-pad. I'm more old school myself, so... I like that old school feel. Sometimes you get this, uh radio chatter. So here's a message from Pab. Okay, so a couple things. Fuses are these items right here. And you'll need those sometimes for the radios, or for um, circuit puzzles, or even creating a slot uh, for supplies. Right now I don't have to worry about supplies since I only have a pistol. But uh, later I'll get some other weapons that require some ammo. Then you can refill them at the camps. But anyway, um, let's go do the next part of this, which is the code. There are two, um, I gotta hurry it up here. There are two Morse codes that you have to put in to start with. Each radio has five steps to it, and we've already completed the first step with starting tuning it to get the code. Okay. So let's do these. So that's the first one. Once you've active or done the first uh, code, then the color code uh, becomes available. So in this case, that's the code. One thing you may want to do right now, and I should have mentioned this earlier, is grab yourself, you know, a piece of paper, 
if you're playing the game, you know, obviously you don't have to copy my notes here with these codes and stuff, but do your own notes. That way you can uh, remember what code goes where. Okay, so now after you've done the uh, codes there, you then sweep the radio dial once again. And this time you're looking for the arc code, which will be down in that red box there. So that's the arc code. And you gotta find the arc box, which just so happens to be down here. Okay, this is another conversation here. This time with one of Pap's buddies named Ferris. Yeah, those flash rings will help with the creature that will uh, hunt at night. You don't want to be out after 2 a.m. or you're dead without one. Um, let's see. Now I'll finish this last step, which is doing the radio wave. Okay, push the A button a bunch and then use the D-pad or the stick to match the wave. And there you have it. You complete five steps on any radio and then you get a letter here, which will eventually spell a word. And I've got all these uh, other radios to do for the grid. You can also view your statistics, at least here. There's one other camp that also has this feature. Getting that switch opens that gate up to the crags. That also goes towards uh, your percentage completion. So anyway, I'm gonna let Pap sleep now. I think I already looked at this. Let me check my other note here real quick and make sure I didn't miss one. Okay, yeah. We're good. Anyway, and then we're going to cover the sensor codes next. Yep, we know. We're still here. So let's go this way first. Basically, with the sensor codes, you're going to notice that you'll either have a blue line, which is that one, or a red line, which is a dot. You always want them to be the blue lines, which will activate them, and there's a rope. I'm going to actually leave that rope there. Yep. So I'm going to pick that up later in the game, when I loop uh, back. So now we've got two more sensor codes to do. Oh yeah, did I drop down here? Yes I did, okay. Just making sure I got that fuse there. Yeah, one thing you'll notice too with the creatures is as it gets darker, um, they actually take more hits to kill. Or in the daytime, they don't take as many. Now here, this one always resets every day, so you can always get uh, an energy bar with that sensor code at that spot. Okay, here's the tricky one. 
took a long time for me to figure this out. Basically, you need the Duago plus Hutch to be activating the codes at the same time to make this one work. That's how you do it. Now, I might have made that look easy, but uh, sometimes it's a little tricky. It's all in the timing. Gotta time your jump when you're luring it towards that cliff edge, and then also time your dive roll. Yeah, there's also another way to play this game, too, where you can actually go backwards in the game. Because there's a secret uh, path around here, but I'm not going to show you that until later, when I loop back in the game. Well, anyway, that'll about do it for uh, today. Oh, and don't worry about the sensor codes. I mean, there's only one you really have to do in the end that doesn't really go towards your completion of the game. But if you want those extra items, it's best to get them. And that item I did pick up from the last one was the flash ring. That'll help protect me at night if I can't get back to a camp in time from the uh, one monster. Anyway, um, feel free if you want to to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. This game does have a save feature. Which is nice. A lot better than the old uh, password system. <laughs> anyway, have a nice day, viewers, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.